Wrapping with Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Wrapping with Reef Bum. I'm your host, for the moment, Keith Berkelhammer here. But we've, we're doing something really kind of cool and special on, on the show tonight. And we've got Matt Peterson from Coral Magazine. What's up, Matt? Ah, you're gonna get grilled tonight. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm gonna get grilled, huh? This is uh, yep. this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna kind of flip the script here, and I'm gonna be handing the hosting duties over to Matt. I guess you're gonna be a moderator, maybe, or you're gonna just. Uh, I will. We'll figure it out. So fortunately, my 187 uh, gallon display tank is being featured in the November December edition of Coral um, Magazine. Matt, I'm I'm holding yep. it up right here. All right, I'm getting my copy over here too. And uh, we'll do one of those. I am freaking thrilled to be featured in the preeminent publication for um, for the reef keeping uh, world. Yeah, uh, let me uh, let me show this here. Um, yeah. That's the cover, right? So we've got the cover for the November December edition, and then uh, we've got the uh, the spread. There there I am with my uh, reef bum work shirt on. My wife likes to say that I'm pumping gas with that uh, with that shirt on there, with the uh, <laughs> with my name. But uh, it's it's a thrill, Matt, and I, I really uh, really uh, appreciate it. So um, yeah, I think what's going to go down here is is um, I'm going to just kind of take care of some business for the show first, and then I'm going to hand the reins over to you, and you're going to kind of grill me about the tank. I mean, I, I wrote the article in detail in terms of what's going on with the tank, and and you know how I like to keep reef tanks. And there's yep. a couple of videos that I did put to, uh, put, put together. So a lot of people that um, do uh, follow me on YouTube have seen videos of the 187 gallon display, but <clears throat> we'll show the folks out there that might not be familiar with my tank that uh, video. And then also there's going to be a, a behind the scenes video of the equipment setup. So, um, yeah, so Matt, you know, I just want to thank you and the folks at Coral Magazine for, uh, for featuring my tank. It is quite an honor. Um, I mean, we, we obviously couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for, uh, 
<laughs> thank you for agreeing. Yeah. Well, listen, this is a, uh, a unique idea. I'm not sure who came up with the idea to uh, to actually do this um, aquarium portrait. That was you, right? Yeah, I was the one who said, "Hey, we should we should talk yeah. to Keith." So, um, yeah. so just a little quick um, bio on Matt. Matt uh, Matt's the senior editor and associate publisher with Reef to Rainforest Media and Coral Magazine, and is the senior editor and publishing partner with Aquatic Media Press and Amazonia. Amazonas Magazine. There we go. There we Ma go. That's the freshwater yep. version of coral, basically. Uh, so. Matt has kept aquariums for 39 years, or is it 40 years now? Oh, 39. Um, yep. He's worked in... All right. He's, he's worked in most facets of the aquarium trade. He's an active aquarius, fish breeder, both marine and freshwater, and was recognized with the 2009 Masna Award as the Masna Aquarius of the year so that's uh that's matt's ditty there but uh i i before we begin i do want to thank the sponsors of the show both bulk reef supply and ecotech marine i really appreciate these companies supporting the show and i also appreciate all you folks out there that are tuning in and uh as per usual please chime in with your thoughts questions comments in the uh in the chat one other piece of uh, housekeeping, all episodes of Wrapping with Reef Bum are now available as podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. So if you want to catch replays of the shows on uh, in the podcast format, you can go to those platforms. And uh, Matt, let's also talk about a giveaway that's going on here, right? Yes. So, yes. so uh, I, could, I could provide some details, and I already mentioned something in the, uh, in the comments on this live stream. So... All right, Matt and the good folks at Coral Magazine have been kind enough to give away some subscriptions to Coral Magazine to some very, very lucky reef keepers. And so that's very cool, and we thank you. So we're going to be giving away, well, Coral Magazine and, and uh, Matt will be giving away three one-year subscriptions to the domestic print edition of Coral and three one-year digital editions of the magazine did i get that right yep and you can um if so if you're international if you're watching from uh germany or south africa or wherever you may be you can uh, still get in and get a digital edition uh subscription which you can access anywhere you have internet so cool so yeah. all right to be eligible to win you're gonna have to head on over to uh pick up your phone and head on over to instagram right here right yeah. And um, first, you must follow Coral Magazine and Reef Bum on Instagram. So, so follow us there. Second, you must tag two. Here we go. There's the post, and I'm going to put the yep, post up. Look for that. I got, I got the post up right here, too. So this is the post, all right? And um, what you must do secondly here is you must tag two aquarium friends in the comments of this post. And that, and that post is on the Reef Bum Instagram page account, however you want to, uh, what do you want to call it? And uh, we're going to randomly select six winners from the comments on Tuesday, December 7th at 12 noon. And the winners, Eastern Standard Time. And the winners will receive a, um, a, a PM directly and must reply within seven days or else a new winner. Winners will be chosen eligible to people 18 years or older. This giveaway is not sponsored or endorsed by Instagram. Check out the link in the Reef Bum Instagram account bio for the official contest rules. Did I miss anything, Matt? Uh, if you work for Coral or Reef Bum, you can't win it. <laughs> That's in the rules. I but think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, I see we got a whole bunch of people that are uh, tuning in. Somebody from uh, New Zealand, and hey, hey, possible digital uh, subscriber winner. He's gotta, he's gotta participate. Yeah, Reef Keeper saying yeah. you said Reef Keeper. Does that mean I get a subscription? Laugh out loud. I don't know, man. Go ahead and <laughs> comment on the post. Maybe you'll uh, be one of the lucky few. So, Matt, I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to you. This is, uh, this is like a relief for me. I don't have to be on my game here, like. <laughs> trying to like figure oh. out to uh what what to ask my guest but i guess i'm gonna have to uh be a little um you know on on the, uh, the lookout for some potentially uh curve hard balls. probing curveball types of questions yep yep all right uh so I'll, I'll lead it off um does vermont still have more cows than people 
I do not know the answer to that question. <laughs> well, look out the window. Tell me what you see. <laughs> I see a lot of, uh, I see some rain. I see some fog. Okay. And uh, right. yeah, you know, so it's, um, it's a little dark and dank out there right now. All right. All right. So, so that was, that was one of the uh, lighthearted questions. Um, oh, that was so, a softball yeah. question. That was the softball. I couldn't even answer the softball question. Oh, uh, all right. So I, I've got a whole list and I don't have a, any particular order to them. We'll see where the, uh, where, where the uh, conversation goes. And Paul down in the comments uh, already asked one that I'm going to get to a little later. So uh, uh, and, Paul, and, and, you got to hang on just for a minute. And, and yeah. And, and the other thing, um, Matt, I just want to remind you about the videos you know, whenever you uh, want me to play those videos, you let me know. Well, yeah, I mean, so I, I would say we could start right off with that if, if you would like to, yeah. um, so people can see what we're talking about. Okay. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I can put a link to the, we actually put that whole, um, uh, article online for free. So you can read, if you missed Keith's aquarium portrait, you can read it online for free on the uh, reef terrain forest website. So, um, while we're watching video, I will make sure we get that up as well. So I'm running the so, um, d display tank video right now, and this is my 187-gallon tank. And right. I've got another video that I'm going to talk about, all the specs of the tank itself in terms of the equipment that's being used. So we're just kind of like doing some um, gratuitous coral uh, shots. Hey, Greg Carroll, what's up, man? And, um, yeah, this this tank has been up and running for four and a half years, about. And it's it's really doing very, very well. It's... It's been through um, certain issues, and it was, you know, we had a rough start with this tank at the beginning. Had a, um, you know, basically had to reboot it after a couple of years. I started the tank with dry rock, and um, for those of you that follow me on YouTube and, and what have you, you know I, uh, I'm not a big fan of dry rock, but um, I, um, I restarted the tank with live rock. Not to say that dry rock is a, is a bad thing. I always go into this whole uh, spiel about dry rock, but... Um, I um I am a believer that if done the right way, dry rock does work out. But that enough about dry rock. <laughs> uh, so you know I've had some cyano, and I think you can kind of see some of the uh, the cyano in in certain parts of the uh, in the video here. Um, what I talked about in the articles, I started doing some uh, experimenting with bacteria dosing, and and um, some of that cyano has receded. I'm, I'm dosing MB7 from Bright Wells as well as Microbacter uh, Clean. And, um, I've actually taken my, uh, Kato offline, but I'm, that's also going to be talked about in the, um, in the walkthrough equipment walkthrough uh, video in terms of what I was doing there. But, uh, you know, the corals are just really responding very well. And I think one, one of the keys for me is, um, just kind of like leaving things alone and not, uh, doing a lot of fussing with the tank. You know, I mean, there's just so many things that you can change with the tank and, and uh, I, I just, I find that um, the more you just kind of sit back and let Mother Nature do her thing, the better things seem to uh, to go versus constantly trying to change things up. Um, this, uh, what you're seeing here is a, uh, a purple monster frag that I had put into the uh, display tank. And both the uh, Oregon Blue Tort and the Tyree Purple Monster are probably my favorite corals. But this uh, Tyree Purple Monster was just encrusting like crazy on the rock. Eventually got shaded out by other corals in the display tank. So I had to pull a frag out of that and um, put it into one of my frag tanks. And it actually has grown out pretty nicely on, on a uh, frag tile. But uh, don't reach out to me for frags because it's going to be a long time. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, my, my whole thing with, with um, SPS is I, I like colorful SPS solid colors. You know, there's a Tyree Red Dragon there, um, the Cali Tort, the, uh, the or I mentioned the Oregon Blue Tort. I like solid colors. You know, I like the, the corals that you can kind of see from afar versus, you know, a lot of the crazy tenuous and stuff with, with serious blue light. So um, I'm, I'm more about full spectrum lighting. These are, um, this tank is lit by, by metal halides and T5s. And uh, it's worked well for me in, in years past. And I did just um, start up a peninsula tank about a year ago with LEDs. And I'm digging the LEDs. But it's, um, you know, metal halides, tried and true uh, technology. And, and um, yeah, you know, there are uh, obviously concerns in terms of using um, metal halide bulbs because of the, uh, the heat. 
and and um, you know other issues, but it's worked for me. So I think we've run through that video. Mac, I can't hear you there, man. Oh, there we go. I can hear you <laughs> there now. We go. Yeah, you had yourself yep. on yep. mute. Come on, the, the, well, the, yeah, host, the host can't mute himself. <laughs> well, I realized I was <laughs> typing an answer to a question in the chat, and it's like, oh, you can probably hear that. So Yeah. 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 So, I mean, we've already had a couple questions come in there, um, and I know we, we touched on it in the article, but Paul wants to know how often you're testing this tank uh, and which parameters you're really uh, uh, honing in on. So I have a, um, a GHL cage director, so I'm monitoring alkalinity twice a day, and and um, I'm uh, waiting on the uh, the GHL ion director to monitor you know all those other parameters that uh, it it, it uh, monitors the nitrate, calcium, magnesium. Um, I'm, I'm missing a couple off the top of my head, but. In lieu of that, what I've been doing for my whole reef keeping career is using solid for test kits to, to test nitrate, to test um, for magnesium, calcium, and I use a uh, Milwaukee uh, test kit for phosphate. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of where I like to keep my parameters, I like to keep alkalinity like in the 8.5 to 9 ODKH range. Calcium, I'm not terribly concerned with, but if it's between 400 and 440, 450, that's cool. Magnesium, I like to keep it at 1400. The um, the nitrates right now on the 187 gallon tank are practically near zero. I, I I I like to keep them a little bit higher, but everything looks really good. Phosphates are near zero okay. on that tank. And do you worry? Do you worry about it? Kind of all of a sudden, like riding that line where it's just really starting to get low on nutrients and, and things could go kind of cascade in the wrong direction. Yeah. I, um, I do worry about that. I think it is kind of uh, walking a little, you know, tighter tight rope than I'd like to. Um, but you know, I think for me, the corals will tell that story and, and I haven't seen any signs of them really being, um, you know, upset by that. Okay. You know, for, um, for really the the key i think is um daily observation and i uh, i talked about bacteria dosing and i listen i know that i have nitrates and phosphates because i have some algae in the tank and i have some algae in my yeah. frag tanks so if i didn't have any of the algae in, in um like cyano a little cyano here and there a little uh perhaps is here or there um you know a, a little um you know, other green stuff here and there. I, I, so I know I've got it and it's a tough, tough thing to tell, right. In terms of exactly yeah. how much is being consumed by your corals. Cause the corals are consuming a lot of nitrates and phosphates. You know, how much is the algae consuming? Um, if my tank was really very sterile looking and there was no algae whatsoever, then I would be more concerned than I probably, um, you know, should be. So, okay. so everything in moderation, a little algae is yeah. okay. But you know, yeah. today I did, I did up, um, I, I had stopped dosing nitrates. So okay. I started, um, dosing maybe, f I think it was five mLs of nitrates. I'm trying to feed the, the fish more in the, okay. uh, in the display tank. So, uh, I've only got like 15 fish in that system. So there's not a lot of fish. Um, and, and, but I, I try to feed four to five times a day. So, so I mean, relating to all of this, one of the questions that that kind of came in was, what are you, what are you uh, doing to keep up with all that stony coral growth? I mean, you're obviously monitoring and adjusting, but what are you doing to to keep up? That's a very good question, Matt. Let me um, let's run the equipment uh, video because yeah, I talk yeah. about that stuff in that video, Perfect. and then I think maybe we could um, kind of uh, fill in the uh, you know the, the the yeah. gaps roll that so footage. let's um let's roll this uh footage right here let me uh just make sure i got the right video being you know i'm I'm the guest here and i and i gotta like run this live stream still man How, shouldn't you be running the live stream shouldn't you be the technical director the moderator and all this stuff but well i guess i still you know, have to do the a, jobs uh that i you know it's a team effort <laughs> gotcha all right here let me uh let me get run this video all right here we go all right so this is a 
custom tank that was built by Coast to Coast Custom Aquariums in New Jersey. Got Euro bracing on the top here. And what um, I'm going to show you behind the tank here is an external overflow box with a lid. Two one and one half inch drains and two one inch returns. I'm using gray PVC piping and everything in terms of the equipment is in the room next door. There is nothing below the stand in terms of equipment. The only thing I've got behind the tank are the ballast for the lights and I'm running Giesman 400 watt and I've got um, 20k 400 watt radiant bulbs in those fixtures plus some T5s and I've also got the uh, Ecotec controllers underneath here. So in terms of plumbing the tank through the wall and into the sump room it was it was a complicated plumbing job I'll, uh, I'll admit that it took me a long while probably a week to plumb the tank to the sump through the wall here but I'll, uh, I'll show you the other side I drilled holes in the drywall and then I put some bracing inside of that drywall and it worked out pretty well so I'm going to show you that right now between the display tank and the sump room is a staircase so I had to go underneath this staircase right here there's a closet pretty much with uh, all the equipment that I have for this uh, system and as you can see the um, all the the two drains and the return lines are braced in right in there so there's one brace up against the wall and then there's another brace right here where the unions are it's all really in there very solid And this is the Royal Exclusive Dream Box custom made sump in Germany that is uh, feeding the tank as well as um, these two frag tanks, the 75 gallon frag tank and the 50 gallon frag tank. So the two drains from the display are right here going into the Dream Box and then I also have two drains from the frag tank that are going into the dream box and this fifth drain is for water changes so I've got 50 gallon drum of RODI water right here and what I do is um, I have a pump in here and so when I need to make some salt water I pump it into this 50 gallon drum mix up the salt let it sit for a while and then I've got another pump in here and I've got some valves and I will, uh, when I need to put water into the dream box, I will turn those valves, turn the pumps on, and it goes right underneath this bench, right into the dream box. So just a real quick overview in terms of the, um, the rest of the plumbing on this dream box. I've got two 100 watt wall exclusive uh, pumps, you know, pumping out through these two one inch return lines so right here this return line is going to the 50 gallon frag tank I've got a valve turned to divert some of that water to the frag tank and this valve is open and it goes to the 187 gallon display and then on this return right here I've got a couple of things going on here I've got this valve again it's turned slightly to divert some of the water all the way up around the ceiling right here right down into the 75 gallon frag tank. Then what I also do, uh, what I have here is another valve and when I shut everything down for a water change I will turn this valve, shut that off, right, leave this valve open, come all the way back here and I will turn these two valves this way and that way, open it up and I've got a drain right here, open that valve up Final tubing goes into the slop sink, empties the water out. So I'm just essentially turning on one of the return pumps and pumping water out. And then to put the water back in, like I mentioned before, I'm turning the pump on on that 50 gallon drum right there and pumping it into the dream box. So it looks complicated in terms of the plumbing. And it, like I mentioned, it, it wasn't uh, an easy plumbing job, but it's. Um, it's great. It really makes maintenance a lot easier. Now, 
The reason why I wanted to go through the plumbing again is because I did make a change, I believe, since the last time I did this video. I think I only had the one frag tank, so I had to splice into the line right here to put the plumbing in for the 50 gallon frag tank. All right, so what's going on? So this dream box is, I believe, 74 gallons. I did have a um, Bubble King double cone. I think it was 250 skimmer on this dream box. It proved to be too big of a skimmer for the system. I was getting a lot of inconsistent skimming. It was just not um, functioning the way it should. I got a Deltec. I'm not. I'm not bashing Deltec. It's been. It's been a great skimmer. I'm really happy with it. But uh, I do eventually want to replace it with another. Uh, Royal exclusive a uh, bubble cam. What else is going on here? I've got a uh, media reactor, so that's got activated carbon in there. The uh, the skimmer, by the way, is not uh, running right now because I just dosed bacteria, so I'm got the skimmer off for four hours, as well as this uh, UV sterilizer, which is relatively new. And you know, I'm a fan now of running UV sterilizers 24/7. Because on this tank right here, the Peninsula tank, when I had that Dino's outbreak, I added Dino's outbreak. I added a UV sterilizer, and it wiped out the uh, the Dino's within a matter of days. And I also really like the water clarity with the UV. So I just feel like it's um, it's a good preventative thing to have on this system to to prevent a potential Dino's outbreak. Uh, you know, it could potentially help with uh, certain fish diseases and uh, water clarity so I'm, I'm running UV on both systems right now now the uh, the other thing I wanted to, uh, to point out I'm using a um, Reef Octopus I believe that's a 9 inch calcium reactor in this system I was running two part so that's different versus the last time I provided this update this thing is, uh, is awesome it um, really provides you know, rock steady alkalinity for me. The um, the effluent for this uh, calcium reactor is dripping into the skimmer pump, and I'm doing that to to help elevate the pH because the skimmer pump there's a lot of aeration going on at the skimmer pump, and so that could help degas the carbon dioxide. The other thing that I'm doing is I am dosing caulkwasser. And I have this 30 gallon drum of cockwasser. It is being, uh, the cockwasser is being pulled from this uh, GHL, uh, two GHL um, dosing heads from this pump. The, uh, you know, it's, I'm dosing a lot per day, and so I have to keep up the maintenance on the, uh, the pump heads because if I don't, then it's going to wear them out. It's not ideal situation in terms of utilizing the, um, the GHL doser 2.1 to dose caulkwasser. But this 30 gallon drum has been great because not only am I dosing the caulkwasser onto the 187 gallon system into this dream box, but I'm also doing it. It's I got lines that run um, along this wall up over the door and it's um, being fed, dripped into the uh, dream box that I have for my 225 gallon peninsula tank. So I'm dripping caulkwasser. I am not stirring this. I don't have anything in here to stir it. It um, basically lasts about a couple of weeks. And then what I'll do is I'll put a couple more cups of caulkwasser in there. Every couple of months, I'll remove the uh, the caulkwasser, the sediment in there. I'll take a shot vac and I'll just suck it all out. I'm just not sure if there's going to be any impurities in there, if it uh, stays in that drum any longer. So I just want to be sure about that and, and suck it out every couple of months and just start over and I start over with four cups of cockwasser and it seems to be doing the trick my pH has been pretty much spot on 8.1 to 8.4 sometimes it goes up to 8.5 the other thing uh, you can see I've got this um, GHL Proflux 4 controller over here I've got my KH director I've got that set to run two times, once uh, overnight and once in the middle of the afternoon. The other thing I'll point out here is in terms of what I'm dosing, I'm actually dosing phosphate on this system as well as nitrate. And some of you will notice I don't have 
the bucket refugium anymore. I don't have the the algae reactor anymore. I've been dosing bacteria, the microbacter clean since July, and then the past uh, I don't know month or so I've been dosing the Brightwell's MB7 as well. And you know my nitrates are 2.5. I'm dosing I think about six mLs per day of of nitrates, and my phosphates are essentially zero. All right. So at this point, you know, I have decommissioned the Cato, and I, but I am still dosing the Brightwell's Cato grill, and I think that's been beneficial for the corals in terms of the iron and the manganese for the, uh, for the coral. So I've been still dosing that, and that is pretty much it in terms of what I'm doing dosing-wise. Not a lot, but yeah, other than that, what else can I tell you? You know, in terms of the frag tanks, I just added a couple of new industrial fans, and these really uh, work very well in terms of keeping the, uh, you know, I've got them set, I think, to turn on at 79 degrees. And, you know, this time of the year, they really don't turn on too often. But these, both of these tanks are lit by metal halides, so that does tend to warm them up a bit. What else can I tell you? I've got this uh, Spectra Pure ultra precise uh, auto top off that I use for the top off and again that's pulling from the 50 gallon drum over there with RODI water what I do have on my list is to clean up this mess in terms of all the power cords I'm, I think I want to, what I want to do is create a, a cover just to really make it uh, more bulletproof um, it makes me nervous that you know it's next to the frag tank but other than that, I'm pretty happy in terms of the way things are going. We are back. Sorry about that. It was a little longer than I right. thought. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to turn off the volume here. Oh uh, yeah. All right. So yeah. So so that was that was awesome, and I, I had to bust your chops just a little bit there in the chat. But um, uh, I know I had a whole list of questions just from that. Um. Uh, and I, I want to go back to that question. We kind of segued into the keeping up with the stony coral growth. Um, and uh, I mean, is it a never ending battle for you that you're just ever using more resources to, to keep things where they need to be? Well, what, what I was um, doing on that tank initially, and I talked about it in the article, is I was dosing two part, mm -hmm. ESV two part, and it was, it was costing me an arm and a leg. It was like I was dosing up to 300 mLs of each two part per day. So what does that cost? For someone who doesn't know, what does that cost? A lot. <laughs> Ballpark. Right. Oh, man. Um, well, I think you're talking about uh, o over a year. Hmm. Sure. I I'm, I'd have to go look up exactly. I mean, it was like every, every two weeks I was refilling my um, gallon uh, containers. So okay. let's say 26 weeks. You know, that's 26 gallons. Um, it was hard to find the, um, I think it was the five gallon ESV mm -hmm. component, the, the concentrated version of it. I think that's what it was. And um, yep. man, what, what was the, uh, I'd have to look up the, what the cost was on, on that um, in terms of the, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, so it's a <laughs> lot of money. That it was it was a lot of money and and um, for that kind of demand in terms of calcium and alkalinity, I just decided to switch over to a calcium reactor. And uh, Greg Carroll, who's watching, I believe, still watching the, uh, the live stream, turned me on to the Reef Octopus calcium reactors. And yep. one thing I remember Greg saying is like the reason one reason why he liked the Reef Octopus calcium reactors is because they didn't have thumb screws in the top, and he thought mm -hmm. that you know anything with thumb screws was kind of a uh, um, a pain in the ass in terms of taking on and off. So the, these reef sure. octopus uh, calcium reactors have basically a lid that you can just kind of screw on and off. So it's really easy to kind of get in there and change out the uh, swap out the media. But I haven't done that too often. I mean, I've been running, you know, this. Uh, it's a nine inch reef octopus calcium reactor, um, CR. 220. I don't have to look up to see actually what the... What, hey, it's in, it's in, it's the, in article. the article. Yeah. It. It's, it's in the article yeah. in terms of the actual model of the Rhea Octopus calcium reactor that I use. But um, it's like, you know, I've used calcium reactors before for my other tanks. 
during my 27 plus years keeping reef tanks. And, um, you know, it's like kind of a set it and forget it type of thing when you got a calcium reactor going. And what do you ever have to adjust? Do you ever have to make a, an adjustment to that? Yeah. You know, and, and um, I find that um, it's easier to adjust the, um, the pH set point inside the reactor, you know? Okay. So if I, um, if I want to increase my alkalinity, calcium and alkalinity, then I will lower that pH set point inside the reactor. And if I um, want to uh, do the opposite, I do the opposite. So, <clears throat> you know, um, on a rare occasion, I might adjust the bubble count or the effluent, but it just seems like it's easier okay. for me to adjust the pH set point inside the uh, reactor to kind of like dial in. But I don't do that too often. And, um, you know, so I think I changed out the, um, the media after uh, six months. And I use okay. the two little uh, fishies reborn. I I had been using years ago the uh, Carib C large arm media, and that stuff was great. But apparently, a number of years ago, they changed their formula, and and the uh, the melting point for it is a lot lower than what I remembered it to to be. So. I've got a lot of that stuff on hand right now. If anybody's interested in uh, taking that off my hands, then I would be open to offers. Not that uh, I want to use this uh, platform to uh, sell stuff, but <laughs> well, you, you do run a you do run a business, Keith. <laughs> right, Reef Keeper, Reef Octopus CR yeah. two twenty nine inch reactor. He has the same one. Yeah, it's a great great reactor, yeah. and and I also have the uh, the Camor uh, Peristaltic um, pump. So that that effluent is um, you know pretty much dialed in, which is which is another great feature. So, yeah, the uh, so to answer that question, I uh, I had a serious demand with the two part, and and uh, I switched over to the calcium reactor, and and it was a, a little rough transition because I didn't quite manage it the way I wanted to, okay. and and my DKH dropped down to like six point four. <laughs> okay. What was so so? What would you have done differently? Um. Maybe I would have, um, you know, not just uh, flipped the switch like that in terms of stopping the okay. two-part and doing the um, the calcium reactor. Maybe I should have been still dosing two-part and got the calcium okay. reactor going. So that that maybe in re retrospect is something I, sh I should have uh, thought about. Um, but yeah, kind of just wean wean off of the one and bring the yeah. other up. Yep. AC so Aquaculture, Chris, we'll... what's uh, what's happening there, Mister Mike? Oh, Chris is here. Nice. Oh, and, and well, so, so the other thing, I, I'm, I'm glad Chris just came on the chat because the one other big thing that I forgot to talk about in terms of calcium and alkalinity is yeah. cockwasser, and I use the Chris Meckley method in terms of... Uh, so what? what is the Chris Meckley method? I don't know. Tell, Should we pipe in Chris again. somehow and get him uh, get him on the uh, the live stream to uh, to talk about his method? I mean, he... Well, I, I feel you've talked about it before, I right? Have. Um, yeah, but for a refresher, a refresher for those who don't know. So um, I'm not going to do this justice, but um, I'll explain in terms of what I um, did. And so I went down and visited Chris in his uh, amazing facility, his coral farm down in, uh, in, in Florida. And, um, you know, so uh, he, he showed me his, um, basically he has a, a drum. I don't know if it's a 50-gallon drum, but um, it's, it's essentially it's a drum with the caulk washer in there. And he's got it covered up with some plastic on top to try to seal it, seal it up as, as much as possible to, to keep the, um, the air out of there. Because uh, if it does get exposed to, uh, to oxygen, then it's going to decrease the potency of the, uh, of the, the Cockwasser um, slurry, I guess you could say, mixture. And um, so he uh, he essentially doses a certain amount to his uh, system, and I copied that. So I replicated that. I got a 30-gallon drum that um actually feeds not only my 187 gallon system but also my new um peninsula tank system the 225 gallon peninsula tank system so what i do is um i um I, like i mentioned in that equipment video i dose approximately 3600 mls of this um cockwasser solution every day to uh to the uh, 187 gallon system and about the same amount no a little bit less to the 225 gallon tank and uh you know i started up i fill it up with uh you know the rodi water four cups of cockwasser and it it lasts for about two weeks 
and when it gets down mm -hmm. to near the bottom, and I don't stir it, I don't stir that at all. And when it gets down near the bottom, I put another four cups of caulkwasser in there and I top it off with the uh, RODI water. And my pH for the um, 187 gallon tank usually is between 8.1 and 8.4, which is great. And I've definitely noticed some increase in growth in the coral since I started doing that uh, method, which was back in the summertime. And and for the uh, 225 gallon tank, the same deal. That, you know, everything is going great in that tank, and my pH in in that system is even higher. I think that's like um, eight one to eight five. So you know, using a Casm reactor and 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 dosing the uh, the cockwasser. I also uh, took another tip from uh, Chris, and and I, I'm dripping the effluent from the Casm reactor into the skimmer pump because that's a okay. great way to uh, degas the CO2. You know, and and um, yeah, so it's um, that 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 was something that um, is is a very important part in terms of the calcium alkalinity uh, supplementation of this system. Cool. So so we've got how you're growing your corals and how you're keeping keeping track of your water chemistry. But one of the questions that did come up was relating, you know, growing the coral is one thing, but what are your secrets to getting such intense colors on your acropora? All right, I'm going to answer that question, but I want to also address Chris's uh, point, and uh, Chris is right. Oh, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Only dose caulk when the lights are out, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what he, he's doing. So I left that part out. But um, all right, so the question is, how do I uh, maintain some serious uh, colors in the, uh, in the Acropora? Yes. So I think it's a uh, it's certainly the ca you know the uh, the calcium and alkalinity uh, supplementation. I think lighting is a big part of it. I use metal halides, 400 watt 20 k iridium bulbs, on that system, uh, supplemented with with T5s, and um, I don't um, I don't dose a lot of um, additives, coral food, amino acids. I don't I don't dose amino acids. I dose. Um, Brightwell's uh, Kato grow, you know, I had, I had, um, Kato growing in this system, but I've taken so, that. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you, you just mentioned you weren't doing that. Are you still dosing the Kato grow now? I am because I think the, okay. uh, the iron and the manganese are, are good in terms of helping colors of certain corals. That makes sense. So I'm, I'm still, um, I'm still dosing that stuff. And, um, I feed, I, like I, I talked about this before, before, I feed my fish a lot, four to five times a day. I have, um, I feed like mice uh, cubes, brine shrimp cubes. I have my own homemade um, fish food that um, actually has a little reef roids in it. So, you know, there is, there is some coral food in there, but um, it's got a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, just some uh, supermarket seafood type of stuff in there and, and um, some garlic, some spirulina powder. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. So, I, I I try to feed my fish a lot, and I believe in fish poop can really help in in terms of SPS. <laughs> I, I I don't have any scientific proof of that, but um, I've heard anecdotal evidence from other folks out there that that it can help. And um, I think also uh, I talked about this before. It's kind of like leaving things alone, not messing with the tank, trying to avoid big uh, changes in the tank you know I think um, if you have a big alk swing then that could uh, potentially impact the coral so yeah I mean like I said in that uh, equipment video I really don't do much in terms of dosing supplements and, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's it's strong you know calcium alkalinity supplementation strong lighting good husbandry and um, you know, I try not to keep the, uh, you know, I, I talked about the nutrients getting kind of close to being bottomed out, but, um, you know, typically I like uh, 2.5 nitrates and phosphates in the 0.02 to 0.05 range. So those are always my targets. But, yeah, it's, uh, and it's different. In my peninsula tank, you know, my nitrates are uh, 10 to 20. My phosphates are 0.05 okay. to 0.1. Um, I'm using uh, LEDs, and I, I'm getting good growth and colors in my corals in that tank. So, which which do you, which do you like better? Do you have do you have coral uh, the same coral in both tanks? I do. So you can compare. I do. And what are you finding? Um, it's interesting. I um, well, my two favorite corals are in the uh, in the new tank under LEDs. I you know, I put a purple monster uh, frag in there. Okay. And. 
you know, that's a slow grower uh, normally. So it's it's been kind of slow, but it seems happy. It's, it's holding some pretty good color. The Oregon, Oregon Blue Tort is um, it's really holding its color. It's not growing that fast as it is in my 187-gallon okay. uh, tank. I put a Cali Tort frag in the, uh, in the new tank under LEDs, and that's doing really well. Um, you know, I'm kind of using that tank as a backup system for some of my okay. other uh, corals that I'm growing out in the more established tank. Um, so, well, and you, yeah, and you mentioned you mentioned you've got all the the frag t the, everything's on this one system, and so if you're able to use that peninsula tank as kind of your your reserves, your um, you know, should something go? What what are the odds that something's going to go wrong in both? You know? Matt, so I want to address a question that Jason L Langer yeah. is uh, asking. Would the uh, Cato Grow be a good supplement for keeping Ganepora happy? They suck the manganese out as far, fast as I put it in. I don't know because I've, I've had awesome luck with the Ganepora in my uh, tank. I mean, incredible luck. I, I, they grow like weeds for me. So maybe, yes, the, uh, maybe Cato Grow is helping in that regard. I don't know, but it just seems like Ganepora these days are – a hell of a lot easier to keep than they used to be. Yes, yes. And Jason has a nice little Ghani uh, garden going. I don't know if you've seen that, but uh, no, I'll have to check that out. No, he's got a nice little, uh, nice little grouping that made me go, oh, I need, I need to do just a Ghani only tank. That would be cool. Um, all right, so I want to interject a couple of things here. One is, you know, we've got over sixty people watching us right now, but only twenty four likes. So I, I would encourage people if they're digging what they're watching here to hit the uh, the like button. And yeah. so more people find it. And as we talked about the beginning of the show, there is a giveaway going on, right? Yes. We are giving away six subscriptions to Coral Magazine. Yes. One year subscriptions, which is really friggin' cool. And if you go over to Instagram, the Reef Bum Instagram account, and um, right Matt is showing that uh, to you right now, and I'm going to show you the post. If you find that post on the Reef Bum Instagram account, and you um, follow Reef Bum, and you follow Coral Magazine on Instagram, and you tag two reef keeping friends in that post, you will be eligible to win a one year subscription to Coral Magazine. And, and the kind folks over at Coral Magazine and Matt are um, giving away six of these subscriptions three yep. domestic. So we'll do, yeah, yep. go ahead. No, I was going to say we're going to do three domestic print subscriptions. So you get that hard copy, and then you also have access to the digital edition, and then uh, we'll have three digital-only subscriptions um, for people overseas who aren't in the U.S. So if you're watching from Canada or uh, I saw New Zealand earlier, um, U.K., anywhere, you know, hey, you could still get in on the action too. So. so go over and check that out on Instagram. You can do it after the show if you want to because this um, contest is going on until uh, next Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, and then you'll have to get the details. You'll have to get your uh, name, address, and email to uh, to Keith, and he'll get it to us. And we'll uh, yeah, it, we'll uh, we'll, we'll message you if if uh, we're going to randomly pick um, the uh, the users from the comments, and um, once we select the winners, we will reach out via private message. Yeah. All right. So so uh, I noticed a little bit of one upsmanship. Uh, Chris saying, you know, we've we've got 130 Ganiaporas in our uh, our Gani garden, and I would say, uh, you know, it's a little, little different when you're running an importer, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, his wife so, is uh, saying, what if we already have a subscription to Coral Magazine? Well, then you can give it to a friend for a gift. Yeah, yeah, spread the love, share the love. Yeah. So, um, so I noticed just this, while we were watching that equipment video um, earlier. I noticed that your return pumps are submerged and uh, I've always kind of gone back and forth between an external return pump and a submerged return pump. I'm curious for your thoughts on why you went the way you did. Well, I, you know, a very successful um, system that I had back when I used to live in Connecticut, it was a 225 gallon um, aquarium. It was chock full of SPS and I had um, external return pumps on, on that tank and um, I liked them a lot. It was a lot easier. I thought, to perform maintenance um okay you know but um it kind of seemed like things changed in the hobby i mean that was like a, a long time ago when it just seemed like submersible pumps were were more the norm and uh there were more options in that regard so um yeah i uh, yeah 
and, and uh, you know, the other thing is that um, I wanted to really make an investment in a good quality sump, and that's why I went with the Royal Exclusive Dream Box, and and they have submersible pumps. So it, it's it's great. It's a bulletproof sump. I mean, it's PVC, made of PVC. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, German engineering. And uh, I paid an arm and a leg. I, I've got two dream boxes for each of my two different systems. And I paid a lot of money for shipping to get, get them uh, over from, uh, from Germany. But uh, I really do think it's well worth it because I, I believe in investing in high quality stuff because I'm in it for the long haul. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, you know, this is not, not a not a hobby that I'm going to be uh, you know getting out of anytime soon. So uh, I do believe in making investments in high quality equipment, and I understand that sometimes that's not possible because of the economics of the situation. And this is not a cheap hobby. And no. I've seen some pretty incredible tanks, and I've talked to some pretty in incredible folks on this uh, live stream. Nope. You want to take nope. that, Matt? <laughs> no, <laughs> that my brother can wait. I thought I had that turned off. <laughs> that um, that run kick-ass systems on um, you know Rubbermaid um, stock tank and um, you know counter current um, um, protein skin. I mean, you know, you could really. Yeah. Greg Hiller was one guy that uh, kind of comes to mind that I've had on a couple of times on this live stream, and and he um, he does a lot. Um, with little in terms of running his uh, reef tanks and and um, Joseph Peck is another guy in in um, Connecticut that has uh, awesome reef tanks and you know does not spend a lot on on the equipment but you know I made the personal choice to uh, to invest in in uh, in that stuff and and um, yeah so does that answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah it does um you know, I, I, I made the choice. Uh, I had a, a, an external pump on one of my systems here in the basement and uh, splashed water on it and killed it. Just, you know, unfortunate accident. So I've gone with submersibles a lot and I've never been worried about the heat because, you know, here in Duluth, Minnesota, it's never warm. So cooling is, you know, not usually an issue here. It's more <laughs> heating the thing. I mean, so, and, and, you know, the other advantage of, um, you know, an internal versus an external is that less likely to um, have a leak. Right. True. With an, yeah. With external. So you you mentioned a couple times uh, back when you were in Connecticut, and that segues perfectly into another question that I had uh, kind of gathered up here. Um, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, you have been a reef keeper in a huge metropolitan area, and now you're in the boondocks <laughs> of northern New England. Is is living in a rural, remote place a huge handicap? Yeah, it is. It is it is definitely a huge handicap because there are um, really no local fish stores uh, nearby. I think the closest one is maybe uh, forty five minutes away. Um, I do miss that. I, I miss being able to. Uh, there was a couple of great um, shops, and they're still actually uh, I, I think still in business in in the Greenwich, Connecticut area. Um, there is um, well, there was there was one guy in Stanford. Uh, can't can't remember the name. Chris uh, 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 Je Je Jensen, Jensen, I think is the uh, the name. He was a guy that um, I just really admired very much in terms of going in and and just kind of eyeballing his uh, awesome display tank all the time and and really kind of inspired me. And then um, you've got uh, Jason over at Greenwich Aquaria, who um, also has. Um, you know, an incredible talent in terms of keeping reef tanks. And I used to love to go over there and, and to run into people. And so we don't have that here in Vermont and, and it's, uh, it's tough. So, you know, all of my shopping is pretty much uh, done online for stuff. And, and when I do get um, out and about to a trade show, then that uh, certainly makes it easier. It's nice to be close. You know, I'm, I'm about a little over a three hour drive from Boston. So there's some, some folks in, in that area, in the New Hampshire area, that really um, know what they're doing in terms of keeping reef tanks. So it's you know I gotta I gotta put a little uh, mileage on the car to uh, to kind of get out yeah. and about and do some actual shopping in person. So it's different. So so we've got two ways we can go. I, I have two questions that work perfectly here. Uh, you want to talk about your reef keeping heroes, or do you want to talk about where you get your coral? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> You pick it, man. 
All right. So tell me first about your reef keeping heroes then. I mean, you know, you started to mention a couple of these shops that you really like to visit. I, I, I've been to Greenwich, uh, Greenwich Aquarium and a beautiful store. Um, who, who are, who are your, your, let, give me your top two or three. Well, I, I mentioned them, you, you know, Chris Jensen, uh, Jensen, um, yep. what was the name of his store in Stanford? He, um, he definitely inspired me. Um, and then Jason, you know, he, I think he has a, I don't, I haven't been there in a long time. I don't know if the tank is still up, but I think it was like a 500 gallon, uh, reef tank in, in that store. And, um, that gave me a lot of, um, inspiration and, and ideas. So, um, yeah, and then just um, I think there's a well. You go ahead. You give a, you give a lot of advice. Who do you turn to for advice? Mm. <laughs> Who do I turn to <laughs> advice? You know, I oh, uh, all, I, I learn a lot on this show. Actually, you know, I okay. um, I learn a hell of a lot on this show. I mean, I've I've um, Chris Meckley is one guy that I had on the show, and we talked a lot. And I was like, hmm, this guy's making some sense. Maybe I should, uh, you know, kind of talk to him about uh, the Cockwasser thing and, and um, you know, some other stuff. And I've um, I've had other guests on this show that, um, you know, Greg Carroll has, has uh, given me some ideas in, in terms of stuff that I've done with the tank. Um, a, a lot of different guys, you know, Tim Herman uh who who has some incredible uh systems i had um farmer tie on a few weeks ago and and you know so I'm, i kind of like pick up a lot of tidbits from from folks that i'm chatting with in the uh in the reef keeping community but that's you know that's a great thing about this hobby right is is that um you you form these relationships and and um you exchange ideas uh there's another guy mike in brooklyn who um, you know have known for a very long time, and and all the folks at um, you know um, uh, Manhattan Reefs, you know I, I used to go to all the uh, Manhattan Reefs frag swaps. Great people, um, and those frag swaps. Hopefully they'll uh, have another one sometime soon. So you know I think that's part of the hobby that um, is um, is is maybe not. Um, you know, it's it's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit in terms of those, um, you know, being part of a reef keeping club, going to a uh, frag swap, and and sure. just seeing people and talking reef, you know. Well, well do you even have a, a reef keeping club up no, there in Vermont? No, no. The closest no. one that, that I'm and I'm a part of it is um, the uh, the Boston uh, Reef Keeper Society. I think is what it's uh, called. Okay. BRS. BRS, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so you mentioned events, and that was one thing I was going to ask you about. Um, you know, looking forward to 2022, do you have any uh, reef hobby events you're planning on attending? Any that you've got your your sights set on? I always go down to uh, the Reef of Palooza show in New York every June. Okay, and, and it was awesome to be able to go down to um, that this past uh, June, the year before it was uh, canceled. I've um, I've never been to a Magna event, and I really would like to go to the one in. Milwaukee in September. I am, you know, the one caveat is, you know, if, if there's a spike in the COVID cases, then I might sure. not venture out, but, uh, I really do want to go to that. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I think I'm, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a new world we're living in today. And, and I think there's been a lot it more is. in terms of, um, people connecting virtually via zoom or via these live stream types of, uh, events which is great. Yeah. So I don't know. I think, I think, I think, uh, this is all good. <laughs> so, so, uh, do you do any, uh, are there any regional events you go to? Maybe not these grand scale national conventions, but smaller local things that you're, that you're looking forward to. Now, like I said, no? there's uh there's not a lot going on in my state. So really the, um, the closest would be, um, Boston and the Boston club. Boston. Yeah. So I want to I want to switch gears and, and ask um, about Reef Bum, the company, the business, the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're coming off on the seven o'clock hour. It's time to time to go go to another. Uh, we'll, we'll start digging deep. Um, I, I'm curious, as I put it, is Reef Bum your full time gig? Let's start there. Is this is this your source of income now? Yeah, it is. It um, OK. It, it had been a part time business for like the first five years. And which started when 2015, so 2015, 
Yeah. So I'd been in the um, in the media business my whole life. I'd been in the advertising business. Yeah. I worked for CNN, Turner Broadcasting, pretty much um, the majority of my business career. And, and I had a, uh, a four-hour round-trip commute from Connecticut for like the last 10 years of that. Um, I'd spent 21 years at, at Turner Broadcasting. And you spent a year in the car. Yeah, there you go. Spent, spent about a year <laughs> in the car. So, yeah, my wife and I had an opportunity to kind of like do something different. And, and um, you know, I knew my time was kind of coming to the end. And it was just, uh, it was rough. So we um, we were empty nesters and we decided, what the hell, let's let's try uh Let's try doing something a little bit uh, out of the ordinary and, and, and go. We had already purchased a uh, second home up here in Vermont. And, and so it became a little bit uh, easier to, uh, to do that. But um, so when I moved up here with my wife back in 2014, you know, the intent was to start a, a business with the reef keeping hobby. And um, I'd always okay. been a reef bum. You know, that was kind of like my, uh, my handle on all the forums, but mm -hmm. I, I thought it would be a great name for a business so yeah. so we um i and i i, I did that part-time i you know i spent maybe uh, 20 hours a week doing the reef bum business and the other uh you know part of the week i was doing some consulting some media consulting some i was in marketing okay. research i was i was doing some consulting there and then um for three years i took a gig as um the executive director of a public access tv station here in vermont I live in the Man wow. River Valley of Vermont. So it was me and just one other guy, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I, I did a lot of great things there, and and um, you know just did a lot of transformative things for that uh, TV station, and had a lot of fun with it. But I think my time was up, and and when the pandemic hit, the uh, the reef keeping business became a lot uh, busier, right? Okay. Because people have uh, I don't know, have had a lot more time to uh tend to their hobbies when they're at home yes so yeah. i just um i thought it was a great opportunity to do this uh full time and i've been doing it full time for a little a little over a year and and um you know one of the things i uh i really wanted to do was connect with people on social media and um you know and this show was a big part of that i i was like i love the name rapping with reef bump i don't know why i was like so i, I gotta do something with that name you know, so, so I just, I just decided to, uh, you know, to start live streaming. That was about a year and a half ago to, um, to, you know, help connect with people. And so, yeah, I, 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 I have the YouTube channel and I got the Instagram account, um, and I grow corals. So I'm a coral farmer and yeah. I, I sell frags. I sell equipment. I only sell the equipment pretty much that I use. And, um, mm -hmm. and I try to really provide folks with, with good, sound advice based on my own experiences and that's what i try to also communicate via youtube yeah you know I, there there are certain connections that i have in terms of with certain companies like bulk reef supply and ecotech uh, marine and and uh, royal exclusive and ghl i sell their stuff and so there there's got to be some baked in bias there right but hey you know i well but, but I, you, I, you it sounds like Sounds like you picked it first. Yeah, I, uh, I'm That's running my I'm tanks hearing. with no. this stuff. So I'm only yeah. really providing that kind of direction and advice to people because I like it. And I'm not going to run my tanks with, with equipment that I don't like. Yeah, and, um, that makes total sense. So yeah, how do go you, ahead. How do you feel about turning your hobby into a business? Ah, I love it, man. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of fun. I, it's a passion of mine. Um, I really dig it. I love helping other people out. You know, sometimes I don't have all the answers. I, you know, I got a lot of questions and, and people want to, you know, seek advice. And sometimes, um, you know, I, I, I can't, uh, you know, recommend that silver bullet. But I, don't, I also don't think that there is a, sil a silver bullet in terms of reef keeping. I think that um, you really have to be dedicated. You really have to be patient. And... Um, and uh yeah you uh you just have to be in it for the long haul it's not something that you can kind of like dip in and out of uh that's uh i'm gonna jump in uh, way way at the start of our, our live stream paul uk reefer asked uh, the question that i had on my list which is how do you avoid reef keeping fatigue i've um i've quit a couple of times i've, I've okay. quit a couple of times um you know it's um it it can be a frustrating hobby 
and and uh, i've taken okay. some breaks you know i when i was in connecticut i had a um you know a, a, you know my tank was like again wall-to-wall corals and, and what have you but uh, i ran into some issues i had some acro eating flatworms in that system and I, okay. and I did a great job in terms of managing that problem by just basting i didn't tear the tank apart and that tank um did really um well even with that um problem but my wife and i were um we're looking to make uh, you know a move at some point in time and and i was like all right you know i think um maybe now is the right time to kind of take a break with the tank and thank god that i did because um three weeks after i broke that tank down we got hit by superstorm sandy and we lost oh. power for eight straight days and um thank wow. god i had broken the tank down and we even had a full house backup generator yeah but um a few days before sandy hit you know backup generators automatically exercise like once a week to make sure that they can function properly and so this yeah. generator did not um, do that that uh it, it malfunctioned during that exercise and so the uh, the wow. technician came out and he looked at it and he's like well you've had a catastrophic failure and um huh. i'm not going to be able to help you out because i'm going to have to spend all my time maintaining generators for you know working generators for my customers during the storm so you're kind of you know i'm not gonna you're you're uh, yeah. No, we, yeah, we, you're out of luck <laughs> and um so thank god i did break that tank down it was i guess good karma that i decided to kind of take a break at that point in time a good 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 time um and then there was another time uh years years before that i had a pretty successful 120 gallon um tank but i had this um invasive macro algae in that tank that um i think it was some sort of a uh, colopera um that okay. um got into every nook and cranny of the rocks and i just could not eradicate it and it just became so so frustrating that was sort of early on in my reef keeping career and mm -hmm. uh i think that's probably you know more common early on in a reef keeping career to kind of like throw in the towel because you get frustrated yeah. and there's just so many different things that can frustrate you and sometimes a um sure. sometimes a reboot or, or a, a year or two off is a really good thing because you get rejuvenated but uh i don't know reef keeping is in my blood i don't see myself uh giving it up anytime soon well so so you mentioned being rejuvenated where do you go for new inspiration or to be reinvigorated if you're kind of like uh kind of ho-hum what, what do you do what do i do hmm you know yeah where do you where do you turn? Oh, in, in in terms of trying to like keep things interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think um, it's always interesting to try to experiment. You know, I've um, I've thought about um, and I talked about this in the article and I talked about it on my YouTube channel. I've, I've thought about doing a big reboot on the 187 gallon display tank. You know, it is wall to wall okay. corals. You know, and I've thought about uh, um, essentially breaking the uh, the tank down taking the larger colonies and, and uh, moving into the frag tank system and um, setting up a, well, I, I would have to be very uh, calculated with this, but um, set up a second uh, secondary sump, right? And okay. I've always been intrigued, uh, not always, I've kind of railed on um, dry rock a lot, but um, I, it, the, the negative s uh, space aquascapes, the NSAs, do seem pretty cool mm -hmm. to me. So I was like, you know, what if I um, I put together an NSA, you know, dry rock aquascape, and then set up a second okay. set up a second uh, sump, put the uh, the NSA kind of um, um, take it apart a little bit and put it into that second sump and let it cook for like five or six months, right, to turn sure. it into live rock, and um, keep the system going in terms of my display tank, and then gradually start taking you know, the mature colonies out of that display tank and um, putting them into the frag tanks and then swapping out the uh, current rock in that tank with the uh, the dry rock that's been cooking in the sump and just kind of starting off with, uh, with a new, uh, you know, tank and a new aquascape and just plant frags and start all over again. So, you know, that's, hmm. um, that's something that I've been thinking about. You know, am I crazy for like breaking down a tank like that? With, which has been so successful i don't know i mean we 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 preserved it for posterity right here <laughs> yeah. so you know you could always 
you can always just thumb through the pages and be like, oh, oh, I remember that. I mean, you could watch your channel too, yeah. but. You know, I don't know. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's kind of like what I've been thinking about in terms of, you know, the, the new Peninsula tank was certainly something that that got me uh, rejuvenated and and okay. uh, made things interesting because, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate where I have the space down in, in where I'm sitting, which is my finished basement to to have uh, my wife has been very kind to uh, to uh, to uh, let me have the uh, the finished basement for my uh, my passion and and uh the reef keeping hobby so that was hey yeah so i, ne I need another yeah, big pro we i need another big project matt that's what i'm talking about here i guess that's what i'm trying to say is like it's yeah. nice to have it's always cool to kind of restart a tank or to start a new tank so that's that's kind of like what okay. gets me going all right all right so um uh let's see here since you mentioned earlier that you don't have good access locally for really anything um so i'm gonna I, I i lobbed it out there earlier we're gonna come back to it where is your favorite place to get new coral oh well you're, you're so you're talking online now well i'm talking where where do you like to go what do you look for i mean anything this is i'm uh open-ended i'm question. into the uh <laughs> classic corals you know so uh okay the um tyree pink lemonade i mentioned the oregon blue tort the uh, tyree purple monster yep. the cali tort um so, you know, I reach out to, to fellow, um, um, you know, coral farmers that, uh, you know, okay. have the, uh, that, that stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there in terms of corals and the pricing is really, really crazy. And there's this whole tenuous thing going on where you're paying insane okay. amount of money. Um, I have paid, you know good chunk of change for certain frags i i tend to um to try to avoid the really really pricey stuff you know i think my perception is that there's um there's a lot of folks out there that um you know want more affordable corals and um you know so the old school stuff is more affordable these days right it is because it doesn't yeah. have the fancy name and the fancy marketing i mean back then it it was back then it right wasn't. but now it's kind of yeah. like but you know, a, a lot of people that uh, reach out to me in terms of customers are into those uh, sorts of corals. So I think um, being able to uh, to have stuff that uh, you know others can afford is 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 good. But um, yeah, so to answer your question, I I do. Um, there are some vendors. I'll uh, you know, Battle Corals is awesome. So I've I've, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten stuff from uh, from Adam. Um, you know, Abe from Coral uh, Euphoria. I've had him on the show. He's got some great stuff, so I've gotten some stuff from him. Um, you know, so there's uh, there's other uh, folks out there that uh, I talked about. Tim Herman, I've gotten some stuff from him. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, so it's a, so it's a little bit networking. Too. Yeah. It's not just shopping online. It's kind of ACI Aquaculture. Who... Chris sent me a care package. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Uh... Sign me up for that subscription on the care package, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, is, is there a coral out there that you are just like, wow, I have to have it. Oh, right that's now. a good is there, question. Is there one that's, that's on the, that you're on the hunt for? Well, this rainbow splice is intriguing to me, but the price tag is okay. like crazy. Do you know about this, uh, coral? So, I, I think I do, but for people who don't what is a rainbow splice um well what genus is i think it? i believe it's a mill it's a millipora i believe it's a mi so acropora yeah i believe it's a milli okay uh okay folks please correct me if i'm wrong on on, on this but um I, I i don't remember the technicality in terms of what exactly it is if it's a um a fused uh, coral a spliced uh, uh coral but um this is actually a coral that that grows green and and um reddish pinkish um branches but from what i could tell a lot of the frags out there are more green than anything so i think the initial going rate on the coral that a frag for that was like 2500 bucks i think now maybe it's down to more reasonable one thousand dollars <laughs> uh you know listen that's uh that's a lot of change to drop on one frag I mean, I mean, I I did a quick Google search here, and it's, there's no shortage of images, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 
really different. It's like some of these uh, broken flower patterns that you see where you get this intermingling of, of color and random swirls and streaks. And um, yeah, I could see why you would, why you would want that. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. It, it's yeah. Um, listen, it's uh, I, I, you know, I, I do think if you're going to, um, if you're going to um, invest a lot of money in a coral, that might be the coral to do it because it's so unique and there's not uh, anything else out there that I'm really aware of that's similar to that type of coral. I mean, there's, I know there's, um, you know, Grafton Monty caps out there, but I have one of mm-hmm. those. The um, I think it's a Worldwide Corals um, Grafton uh, Monty cap. Yeah, there's a, but there's a few. I've got I've got a. It's grown to uh, about a foot wide in okay. my uh, peninsula tank now. I put it in my peninsula tank, and only the very center, you know, has a little green in it, and the rest is all mm. orange. You know, so. What's the thrill? Of, what's the so what's the thr- thrill in that? I guess I should just well, chop, chop it all, it all up. up. But chop there's no up. there's You're no green mat red, to put uh, next to the to orange. It's all, it's like nothing. Well, <laughs> you got to start. Got to go like cut away all the weed part and go back to that uh that that little that that core that you still have. Reef keepers, that, uh, reef I keeper. I, I agree with that comment. Never drop a thousand dollars on a frag. Wait a few years and get it cheap. It the price keeps coming <laughs> down. Well, so so you you farm corals. Do you ever look at a coral that you're buying as an investment? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like the home wrecker. I uh, I invested in that. You know, that was probably the most ever spent on a okay. frag. You know, a few hundred dollars, okay. and and um. So that was that was something that uh, you know. Listen, I um. You know, I do run a business, so some of the corals that I buy, I'm thinking about it. You know, as as a business, and um, yeah. You know, and then some of the corals I'm buying, I'm thinking about. I want them in my display tank. And, and, mm-hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I think that, um, there's, it, it's a very personal thing in terms of corals and everybody has their, uh, you know, I, I, um, I don't run, uh, um, I run full spectrum lighting. I don't like the blue mm-hmm. spectrum. So, you know, I don't have a lot of, um, uh, I don't put a lot of corals in there with that in mind. I don't have any of these crazy tenuous that can uh, pop under LEDs. Sure. That sort of thing. Yeah. Do you think? Um, I, I find those tanks are even hard just to look at. Yeah, I don't like when you. I don't get it, but blue all the time. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't. I don't know why you oh. have to wear, you know, um, glasses to view a tank. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, to every each person to you know to what they like. Um, so, so what do you think then is uh, the the biggest fad? In, in corals right now being a coral farmer what what do you think people are overhyping and what do you think people are undervaluing well i've kind of already talked about this but i think the tenuous thing is like gone okay. crazy and yep. i would not pay the yep. money that i'm seeing people um you know paying or at least the prices out there for these tenuous mm-hmm. that uh, i think it's just nuts um okay. i you know i listen the home wreckers are tenuous i've got the um the sexy corals orange passion that's a tenuous the um i've got a couple other tenuous so you know but i'm uh, well tenuous is a, is a good coral. yeah no i mean and, and it, those right? are more like um mainstream tenuous more well-known yeah. tenuous sort of like old school tenuous that um have been around but sure there's a lot of stuff that's just coming on the market with these crazy uh you know names and marketing hype that you know six seven hundred eight hundred dollars for a frag i can't get behind that so um but you know listen i um i i, I kind of invest in the uh, in the stuff that i think is uh, more well known and and that's what i that's what i like in terms of my taste of corals i like the old school stuff so what what is under so what is undervalued right now? I think, think I think the old school stuff. Attention. You know, I did a video on on okay. on um you know recently about um, budget corals, and I talked about the Orray Red Planet. You know, that's like a yeah. forty dollar coral, and that's an awesome red mm-hmm. table that you can add with with a green uh, base. You know, to the uh, to the tank. Um, the uh, the Milka Stylo. Sometimes you can probably get that for free. You know, in terms of frag, <laughs> and that's a brilliant brilliant purple. You know, it is. Um, you know, then uh, like Tyree Red Dragon, that's just about as pink as it gets in terms of a coral. I mean, it's a striking coral. I mean, all, and all these corals, you know, maybe except for the uh, Milka Stala, were like a big thing, a big deal. 
You know, um, yeah. I remember the uh, when the Aura Red Red Planet came out. It was kind of like a big deal, and uh, I was like, yeah. I got, I, 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 I wasn't one of the first to get it, but um, I was like, wow, man, this is a, this is a score. I got an Aura Red Red Planet, you know. But um, yeah, so I. How many how many pieces of Red Planet do you think you've sold now? Oh. Uh, well, that I, you know, I had an old, you know, my, my first colony in my uh, Connecticut tank, the 225 gallon Connecticut tank, I sold a lot of them because that thing just got huge. And, um, sure. but in my current tank, you know, the 187 gallon tank, my red planet has, um, just encrusted like crazy. I don't understand it. I mean, I've never seen a coral encrust like this coral has encrusted. So, um, I haven't been able to, uh, frag it as much as I would like. But okay. now it's starting to um to kind of sprout up and, and branch out a little bit. But um yeah, I think the undervalued corals are the old school corals and uh you can get some dynamite stuff for twenty, thirty, forty bucks. So everything we've talked about is is what some people jokingly refer to as colored sticks. Yeah. What well, where where do you go beyond colored sticks, Keith? Why do you have to go beyond colored sticks? <laughs> You know, I think I I always like to um uh quote uh, from this movie um um what was the uh Where What You Dig. It was in that movie um okay. uh, what was the name of that uh movie? Um it'll it'll pop into my head. Help help him out in the comments there. Someone knows. I don't. Yeah, it was it was kind of a wild and crazy uh movie. Um, but there was a, there was a quote in there, you know, where would you dig? Right. So you should yeah. put the corals in your tank that you dig. And that's why I did. I dig solid colors. Fair enough. So Amanda, Amanda asked in the uh, chat here, is there a specific species of SPS that you struggle with or that is more finicky in your reef? Hey Amanda, um, millies are challenging. You know, I think millies are like one of the more challenging SPS corals out there, and and um, okay, they also what makes them challenging? I don't know. They're just not as hardy as other corals. You know, they can't withstand as much stuff in terms of swings and and changes in in tank uh, parameters and and things like that. If there's like, you know, something going wrong with the tank, a millie might be the first one to kind of like you know bite the dust. So it's it's your canary in the coal yeah. mine. Yeah. Um. And but yeah. millies also yeah. happen to be like one of my favorite types of corals. So that's a problem, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. It's just you, you want to walk. I love on that the edge. Um, <laughs> um, the um, what's that blue Millie? That um, the um, there's so many great Millies. The Aqua SD Rainbow Millie is like one of my favorites. I got a I got an awesome um, pink Millie from um, from Chris and Amanda. I think um, I think Chris is calling it the. Uh, the um, apple pie millie or something like that, cherry pie millie, cherry right. pie millie because it's cherry, it's okay. cherry colored. Right. The Palmer is blue millie. I mean, how could you get any better than that in terms of a millipora that's blue? Um, I love that coral, you know. And I, I lost uh, my colony in the in the 187 gallon display, but I got another uh, frag of it in my uh, in my uh, okay. peninsula tank, and that's growing out really nicely. So, um, yeah, I just really like um, any. Give me a pink millie, a, a red millie mat, or a blue millie. That's dynamite to me. That's gold. Do you do you repeat your corals at all in your tank? Do you place yeah. a colony of this coral in I do. different places? I have um, okay. I have two Tyra red dragons in the 187 gallon display. Um, I've got two Aurora A Hawkins in that uh, display. Okay. I think um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And again, it's all up to um, the individual in terms of what they like and what they don't like to do. But um, mm -hmm. I think that um, I think that uh, is a really cool kind of thing is to kind of have a um, um, you know kind of a little repetition. Well, it looks natural. Right. That's always been my my take right. on it. Um, earlier, way earlier in our conversation, you kind of mentioned checking in on the tank every day. Um, you know, obser observing everything every day. I wanted to dig a little deeper into that and just say, what are you looking for? Are there particular corals that you're watching? The canaries in the coal mine. What 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 are you looking for with that um, reef bum intuition that comes with experience? I don't know. You could just kind of know know something's off, 
Um, you know, maybe there's okay. like, um, you know, certain part of the coral that uh, the polyp extension is not what it uh, is typically like, or maybe the color okay. is not as vibrant as it had been. Um, yeah, so there are there are certain corals that um, you know tend to reflect those symptoms more than than other corals. I had this um, the uh, the unique corals original strawberry shortcake was kind of like mm -hmm. my canary in the coal mine for the uh, for for my display tank, the 187 gallon display tank, and um, man, that thing would vacillate back and forth between looking great and looking crappy, and I was like, uh oh, what's going on with the tank? And it was like the only coral that was doing that. And then, um, man, one day I finally like lost it, and uh, I, I guess it just uh, it couldn't hang in there. I, I did acquire another frag, and I've got it in the peninsula tank. But um, yeah, I just um, I think you could just tell. I think if you look at your tank every day, then uh, I think you you could notice pretty easily in terms of something that uh, that changes. But you know, I always also try to look for new growth on the tips of the acros, and and you want to see that, and. Um, I think another thing that uh, I like to see in terms of studying the numbers is to see, um, you know, the alkalinity. And, um, you know, I think a good sign is to see the alkalinity dropping gradually over time and, and allowing, you know, which, which means you have to make adjustments. That's a good thing because mm -hmm. that means that your corals are growing and they're consuming more calcium and alkalinity. So that's, that's something that I want to see. I, I do not like to have my alkalinity monitor control the supplementation of calcium and alkalinity because I think that's something that um, I'm, I'm a little lazy and I'm not going to go in and look at the data in terms of sure. what the, uh, the, you know, the, um, the calcium and alkalinity is trending at. I like to visually kind of like walk by my KH director and, and see what the number is. And if it's kind of like a slow decline over time or at least a steady number, then to me, then things are uh, good. If that number starts going up, more and more, then I, you know, the corals are not consuming as much calcium and alkalinity. And I think there's something wrong, even if I don't see anything with the corals. You know, then I think that requires me to kind of dig a little deep and and see if um, something is uh, awry. <laughs> I, I love slick reefing down here. My melonberry monty is my canary. Closed polyps equals high CO2 or approximately low alk, if I'm reading that right. And uh, that's great. I mean, and. I mean, you learned that. You said you've been reef keeping how many years? 27? 27, 28 years, yeah. 27, yeah. yeah. You, you, you pick these things up. Uh, so the, I'm going to take and tap into that 27 years of wisdom here. Um, this is one of our, if we didn't have good questions. By the way, Matt, I agree with Jason talk. Langer. You are a good host. You're asking some good probing <laughs> questions there. Well, well, thank you, Jason. Uh, <laughs> I had a team help me here with this. Uh, we got a lot of good submissions. So, uh, what are some of the worst mistakes people make when they start in on reef keeping? What are some of the worst mistakes people make when they start in on reef keeping? I think patience yeah. is a big thing. You know, I think, um, I think okay. people don't, um, don't give things enough time. I think that, um, if they see something going wrong with the tank, then they'll throw a lot of different things at it. I think that, um, I think, and I've talked about this before on the show, I think, Social media and, and, and reef um, forums can be um, both good and bad. There's a lot okay. of information out there. Some of that information is not good. And newbies sometimes will go down a rabbit hole that they shouldn't be going down because they're listening to somebody okay. that might not have the experience to uh, kind of back mm -hmm. up that advice. But, um, you know, I, my advice is um, to take things slow and, and to, uh, to not react too quickly but uh yeah you just need a lot of patience and and uh, you got to spend you got to do a lot of due diligence well we talked about this being an expensive hobby and if you're not patient you're going to spend a lot of money really fast and really run the risk of losing a lot of money really fast too oh listen so. that's happened to me let me tell you and it's happened to everybody, you know. Well, I, tell I us. Tell us. That's why we're interviewing you. Tell us. <laughs> Listen, everybody's had tank crashes. Um, and and if, yes. if they haven't, and they haven't, you know, said that they've had a tank crash and they're lying because it, uh, you, you have losses. That's a part of the game. That is a part of the game. And it's, sometimes it's stupid things. You know, uh, one time early in my reef keeping career, I, um, I had this, uh, you know, I had, um, I was using double-ended 
middle halide um, bulbs. Not the mogul type, but the, the you know, the, the, the double-ended that go into the fixtures and all that stuff. And um, So I was down at one of the local uh, reef, reef stores and, and, and one of the, uh, the tanks I was talking about earlier, one of the, uh, the local shops in Connecticut, the guy was um, running his halides and he had single-ended mogul bulbs in the fixtures and he was running without the glass. He took the glass out because he wanted to get higher par. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, that's a, that's a cool idea. Maybe I should try that with my bulbs. And, and the thing is, with oh. double-ended bulbs, there is not, they do not have the UV-protected glass like a single-ended um, mogul halide bulb would have. Let me tell you, Matt, I, I pulled the lenses on those uh, fixtures, and within a, within a couple hours, I came back, and um, I had fish that were, like, just spiraling. They were getting sunburned. It was a complete wipeout in terms of acros because they got completely yeah. burned, you know? So that was like a tank wipeout, and that was like a stupid mistake. I just wasn't doing any, you know, my homework on that. Um, so it, it, it's, you never know. And, you know, and then recently with my Peninsula tank, I had a um, an overdosing accident where, where I had some nitrate, ammonium nitrate, back siphoned into my sump. And that's because I had the uh, I had it on the uh, the doser. I had it, I had the uh, the container with a nitrate about four feet off the floor, right near the doser. And so um, I, you know I never uh, even thought that was a possibility in terms of back siphoning. So I did some maintenance on the uh, on the dosing heads. And when I do that, I, I pull the uh, the tubing off of the peristaltic pump. And I take out you know the little uh, rollers. So that basically allowed the whole 1,000 mLs of nitrate to back siphon without my knowledge into my sump. And so um, I sat down, I, I went, to, I did my tank maintenance and I went, I skied for like an hour or something like that. I came back home and sat down in my, uh, my, my chair right here and I look over and I walked by the tank and I was like, why aren't the fish out? That's a weird thing. And then... Um, mm -hmm. I sat down at my desk, and then all of a sudden, one of the fish just jumped right out of the water. And I went over the tank. I was like, something is wrong here. And, um, you know, I ended up losing almost nearly half of my fish because of that mistake. Ouch. Yeah. And we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's see here. I want to I wanna take an opportunity to thank everyone for being here and letting me host. Thank you for those compl compliments. Um, I think uh, we should mention again the the yeah. uh, giveaway that yeah. we're doing, yeah. Keith. Yeah, yeah. Do you wanna, yeah. Let's start there. So, folks, we're um, the kind um, people uh, at, at Coral Magazine are giving away six subscriptions, one year subscriptions to the magazine, three print edition, the domestic uh, print edition, and three. There you go, and three uh, digital editions or subscriptions that can be. Um, accessible accessible that are accessible by uh, folks either here in the US or outside of the US. So what you need to yeah. do is you need to go over to the Reef Bum Instagram account. The Reef Bum. <laughs> and there's a post on the Reef Bum Instagram account that um, provides you information about this giveaway and all you got to do it's very simple. Follow the Reef Bum Instagram account and follow the Coral Magazine Instagram account. And in the comments on that post on the Reef Bump Instagram account, just tag two reef keeping buddies. Okay. And um, this contest will be open until next Tuesday, December 7th at 12, 12 noon. And we will um, reach out to the folks. We're going to randomly pick folks that are um, commenting and tagging their. Uh, they're friends and following us and we will pick those folks and reach out to them. And, uh, if you want to look at the rules, then you just go to the reef bump Instagram account and go into the bio and click on that link. All right. Yes. So the reason I brought that up, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about working together, you and me working together on this, um, aquarium portrait that we did. Um, cause you're, you're a content creator. You, you've got this media background uh, I, I wanted to ask how that played into um, being able to sit down and, and write about 
and write your own story, your autobiography from a reef keeping standpoint. Um, you know, what, what went into that for you? Well, all right, this is a shame. This is a well, shameless man, me, plug, but me. I did, uh, I, I, I did write my reef keeping uh, biography in this book. <laughs> shameless, <laughs> the, the shameless plug. plug. No, no, no. We'll shamelessly plug all day long here. You know, I mean, you got, uh, we gave you a lot of pages, uh, Let's no, listen, here. man, I, um, yeah. I had a lot of fun with writing the article and, um, it was a story about this tank. It's the latest story about my reef keeping journey with the, uh, with that tank. And, and, um, I enjoyed it, uh, thoroughly. I think you gave me a certain amount of words and I blew by that, that, uh, that limitation there. And, and, um, I just, uh, I'm very thankful for the, um, the uh, the opportunity and the platform to to share what I've done in, in this this great and awesome hobby and and um, you know I hope yeah. I hope people that uh, have read the uh, the article and people that will will uh, will get something out of it and will learn something about it. So so what what went into um, uh, pulling the materials together? Did you have everything kind of already ready when I approached you, or uh, was there a scramble? <laughs> Um, well, you know, I know my story pretty well. And so it was, a, it was just a matter okay. of, um, just kind of taking what I had in my head and, and, um, you know, I've, I've also talked a lot about it on the channel, the YouTube channel here. And, mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I, um, I did not have a lot of photographs. I've been pretty much, I, I used to, okay. I, I, I used to take a ton of photographs back um, when I was in Connecticut, that 225 gallon tank. And I had, I think there was like one video that was done of that tank that I didn't even do. And then I completely mm -hmm. switched it around when I started up the 187 gallon tank. I did, um, you know, 90, 80% was like video and, and uh, the rest was, was pictures. And then recently it's like no photos. So I did have to scramble uh, Matt to get uh, a lot of those photos for you guys. But um Hey, well, you pulled it off. You, yeah, you, it wasn't. It, it wasn't it like it was a pretty great. tight deadline, too. It wasn't like, uh, hey, can you, can you, uh, you know, like a few weeks or whatnot. I was like uh, a matter of like days. I had, I, I got, I got you a draft, but it's a labor of love. Yeah, and and uh, I just, uh, it was a lot of fun, and I appreciate the opportunity. So, so how did you take those photos? What did you use? How did you accomplish that? Oh, we talking the uh, the actual uh, gear here? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I used to um, I used to be a Canon person, <clears throat> but I, and I had bought that uh, the uh, the Canon um, um, the uh, the Mark uh, the the whatever it was the 3D Mark uh, whatever Canon I had a Canon <laughs> Canon uh, body <laughs> lenses and all that stuff and I switched it over for Sony, so I've got a Sony okay. A7 III. I love it a lot. It's it's really I got it because I wanted to do, start doing 4K video, and it also okay. happens to take some uh, kick-ass photos too. So yeah, I um, I I use that uh, Sony, and I've got I've got a couple of great macro lenses, and I've got um, right. one of those um, um, viewers that you put the um, the housing around the camera, and you can kind of bury it underwater and do top-down shots. Which okay. uh, you know everybody knows a top down shot is um, certainly going to be a great yeah. way to highlight and bring out the beauty of a coral. Yeah. Did you did you do a lot of shooting from the side too, or? Yeah, a little more more top down than anything. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's it can be like game changing in terms of the photos you get on the side versus a top down. But there's also certain things okay. that um, you know kind of kind of tricks of the trade that you should follow when you're when you're taking uh, pictures of the tank whether it's top down or from the side which is you know turn off your pumps and you know so you don't have a lot of use a tripod right mm -hmm. so you don't have any uh any movement and um i do everything pretty much in in uh in manual and i i try to like adjust okay. the exposure bit, but i keep the f-stop uh constant now we're starting to really dig into some technical stuff here, huh? <laughs> well, I, I did mean, write you know, a couple of articles someone... that people could check out about uh, tips on photographing uh, reef tanks. So, where, where would where would they find them? Um, it's actually in the book. I, I've, I've got um, okay. I've got um, you know some helpful uh, hints about that. But also, if you just like Google reef bum and photographing reef tanks, you'll probably find the uh, blog post too. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I mean, you know, 
one one of the things I, I wanted to 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 ask you was having been through the process of of Coral approaching you to say, hey, we'd love to feature you. Um, what, do you have any advice that you would give to someone who is like, hey, I, I would love to see my tank in Coral, or I, you know, it's something I aspire to. Um, what would you say to that person? Hmm. Well, you know, I think that um, that's a very interesting question there, Matt. I, I think, you know, listen, I think um, social media has definitely helped me in terms of bringing visibility okay. to what I do and my tanks. So I, I okay. think cer certainly a social media presence does not hurt. Does not hurt. Okay. And I'm sure that's what you guys do sometimes too, is you try to hunt down uh, certain Aquarius via social media. I mean, I mean, I, I, was, I said it earlier, it was just getting to know you uh, from having worked with you. And then just, I think I just caught a glimpse of one of your tanks uh, of the 187 was like, oh, that's it. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, so, I mean, I've answered that question many times. I was hoping to, you know, uh, get some uh, outsider perspective on working with coral because it's it is uh, hard to get into. That's something I've said many times. Um, you know, it's not like someone can just be like, "Here's my tank. It's awesome. You should put it in the magazine." That's great. Um, but I mean, well, I mean, what's what's your advice to somebody that doesn't have a social media presence? I I don't really care about the social media presence. Um, I I think you know. It, we we publish six aquarium portraits a year uh, at most. So the odds of getting into coral for anything is is really high or really low rather. It's it's an incredibly tough bar. I mean like I've never had a picture on the cover of Coral magazine. Hmm. I work for Coral magazine. I take pictures. I've never had a picture on the cover of Coral magazine. And I know Amanda keeps asking me, <laughs> what's it going to take? What's it going to I want I want to make the cover. It's hard. Um I, I always tell people take tons of pictures. Um, and as you kind of mentioned earlier, having to scramble for pictures, um, obviously you probably would have liked to have had more time yeah. there. Um, I always tell people, well, you said it perfectly. You know, you said you gave me a, a, a word length and I kind of blew by it. And I, I feel like most of the time as an editor, I will tell people, write the story you think need, that needs to be written. We can, we can edit it. We can fix it. We can trim it later. Um, how did you feel about being edited? Oh, uh, that's cool. You know, I, I mean, listen, I, um, I, I fully expected to, uh, you know, to be edited and, and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and that, and that was also something you did say to me is like, listen, just write the story and, and, um, you know, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out in terms of write the story of the tank. But, um, yeah, you know, I think that, um, there, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of adhere to certain um you know guidelines in terms of the amount of words but that um it ultimately it doesn't really matter because you want to tell the the right story you want to tell the story um mm -hmm. you know you could also just keep going on and on and on and on and on and and at that point you're gonna have to uh cut back but i always say to myself that um it's easier to to chop down versus to um to have to add on true true are you um how much did your media background play into being able to write content and produce content in general? Not just, not just coral specifically, but in general, you know, um, I, um, it, it's definitely helped a lot the last uh, six years to be, you know, I blog, I try to blog once every one or two weeks and, and, uh, you know, for YouTube, I write scripts and I have written, you know, other articles in the past about my aquarium. So it's, you know, for me, it's not something that was like brand new, and I wrote that book mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. So, uh, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I don't see myself as like a, uh, I'm not a writer per se, you know, I guess maybe okay. I'm a, I'm an author and I'm a blogger, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, grammatically it's, um, I'm glad to have, uh, to have the resource of Coral Magazine behind me to, <laughs> to, uh, to make sure that everything was all buttoned up. But I think you guys did an awesome job. I was really happy with the, with the way things, uh, you know, turned out. It, 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 yeah, I thought it, I turned out yeah. great. Yeah. And that we get to have this follow-up conversation is a, a unique experience. A lot of times if this is a, a tank from Europe, it's been written in German and having a, a conversation with the author is, would be a, a futile, ex, uh, a futile exercise. So this is a, this has been a really good opportunity. Um, Rajendra, you asked, uh, what issue it's the November, December issue. 
So the Fang Blennies issue, uh, November, December, 2021. And if you have a subscription already, um, you should have gotten it. And um, it's also available in the digital edition. And then I just reposted the link to the um, to the online excerpt. Uh, uh, we were uh, Keith is gracious enough to let me put it online. Say sure, let's put it out there for everyone, uh, so you can actually read Keith's article for free and read uh, all the things we've been talking about. It's all right there uh, in the in the comments. So on the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So we got 15 minutes left here. Oh, we're doing this for two hours. Uh, I didn't know we're doing that for two hours. Uh, oh, we know we can. No, I know no, that's no, cool. I, I, let's do two hours. I had it. In my you had head in your head that it was two hours. So. That's cool. Everybody always <laughs> gives me griefs. Like I'm always trying to end the show because people are like, keep going, keep going. It's everything's going well. Keep going. I'm not trying to end the show. I just uh, busting your chops. No, no. Okay. Well, I have. I'm looking over the the question list here. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. We're get, we're getting down to the end of 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 some of the broader, less technical questions. Um, so let's see here. We won't do that one. Uh, all right. So where do you see your reef keeping hobby five years from now? <laughs> Yours, be, your personal hobby first. And then I'm going to ask the same question again, slightly be, different. The old five so, year, uh, five year question sure, there. Right? Yeah. I'm like I'm on a job interview. Yeah. You are. <laughs> <laughs> um, where am I going to be in five years in the reef keeping hobby? You know, um, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be a reboot in the, uh, in the future for the, for the 187 gallon display. I don't know. Definitely kicking that around. Okay. <clears throat> I think, um, when I added the peninsula tank, that was a big deal for me because it, it meant, um, a lot more work, you know, twice as much work because it's a second system. And I did that because I wanted to have, um, a backup system and, and not, um, you know, so I, like we talked about, I've have I have uh, a number of uh, my favorite corals in that in that uh, new tank, just in case. But um, it it is a lot of work, you know. I, I, I uh, well, how much how much work are you putting in? I mean, you said you doubled it. So what does that what does that equate? People don't necessarily know if they don't have a tank that size, or two of them at this point. <clears throat> if I'd had to say, in, in terms of overall time I spend with maintenance per week, like hours, per I would week, say yeah. four to five hours per week. Okay. Um, you know, that's, right. uh, it, it depends on what's going on, on on that particular week. You know, I have a, a certain, um, calendar that I follow in terms of maintenance and sometimes okay. uh, certain weekends, which is when I do my maintenance can be larger projects versus other weekends. So, uh, yeah, it, it depends. And yeah. And, and there's issues with that I'm dealing with that it could be a lot more time that I'm spending with the tanks. So I've got six tanks now mm -hmm. I've got, um, the 187 gallon display and the two frag tanks that are featured in in the uh, coral magazine issue. Then I've got the peninsula tank, and I've got another frag tank that's plumbed into that peninsula tank. And then I've got a quarantine tank. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So do you do you envision adding more tanks no. in the future? No. 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 <laughs> yeah. You're not even like a pico or I do or have an MPS somebody did. Like um, Coast to Coast Custom Aquariums um, did a very nice thing and, and gave me a, um, you know, gratis, a, um, a small little maybe 10-gallon tank that's really cool. It's got this um, okay. um, slanted front viewing panel. So I got to do something mm -hmm. with that tank. So I guess I guess okay. a seventh All tank right. is in the, uh, in, in the future, but um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with that tank. But, yeah, I think um, right now... I'm good in terms of major tanks and, and, uh, although there is a nice little spot in the corner back over here where I could fit in a really neat cube. So you never know. <laughs> so, so if a, if a expansion in the tanks isn't in your future, what about reef bums future? Where is you, where are you going to take your business? You basically went full time at the start of the pandemic. What's the plan? Do you have a plan? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's interesting. You asked that question because I'm actually redesigning my website and um, okay. so I'm, I'm I'm very busy with that, and I really want to kind of emphasize the uh, the coral selling side of of the business. You know, the big the big pieces of my business are um, you know selling the equipment and selling the corals, but um, I want to just make the website a much better online shopping experience. So I'm trying to expand my coral collection. 
So I've got um, the one frag tank that's plumbed into the new uh, Peninsula tank that has nothing in it right now. So I've got all that mm -hmm. real estate. It's a um, it's another 50 gallon frag tank, and that's uh, 48 inches long by 24 inches wide by 10 inches tall. So um, I'm going to um, you know put a whole bunch of um, corals to grow in that frag tank and. The Peninsula tank is um, is doing really well, and I anticipate in about a year or so being able to start fragging stuff. I, I got some stuff in there. I could I could start fragging right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that because I just I need um, I need it to time to grow. So you know, right now maybe I've got 40 corals that um, I have frags available for for right now on the website, and and I'm hopeful in, in about a year or so that maybe that can grow to 100 or or so. So. It's just going to be a much um, more emphasis on the uh, the aquaculture side of my business, and and uh, uh, you know I'm very psyched to continue to connect with folks via YouTube. This live stream is a lot of fun. I've had some awesome guests on, including you there, uh, Matt. And um, yeah, I think it's um, I think as long as people keep appreciating, you know, the um, the content that I'm pushing out, that's uh, that's great. I think most of the people that find me in terms of customers or through YouTube. So okay. it's, um, it's something I definitely want to continue to grow. And, and one other thing I should say about that contest, which you don't have to do, but if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be awesome. It's not going to help you win the uh, Coral Magazine subscriptions, but if you want to hit that subscribe button, then um, please, uh, please do so. And, and I'm done with that, uh, that shameless plug. You got to do it. My, my son has grown up with the uh oh what is it smash that like button. yeah he's and i we don't even let him watch youtube and it, that's like seeped into his life as an 11 year old smash that like button he'll say it out of the blue for no reason um so so okay so i'm getting to the closers um you keep reefs and you like to ski do you have any other hobbies that we don't know about i'm a yeah i'm a huge skier i ski pretty much every day <clears throat> big fly big fly okay. fisherman I didn't know that. I am yep. too. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. Um, I um, I love I, I love road biking. Okay. Yeah, so we got some great uh, stuff here and some great hills here in Vermont to uh, to road bike. So okay. uh, yeah, those are kind of like my outdoor passions. All right, all right. So do do they ever take away from? Do you find like summertime takes you away from the tanks because you're getting outside and. Do you, do you go through that cycle in your personal hobby? I don't know, Matt. Somehow I've figured out a way to kind of weave in the whole reef keeping thing where it doesn't impact anything. The, um, you know, the only time that I get nervous is when I leave the house, it go away mm -hmm. for a few days or for mm -hmm. a week on vacation or something that that's, uh, get a, a lot of agita about that. Do you, uh, do you have a, a reef keeping buddy who comes to watch or is it uh good luck? No, we got a, I, I got a oh. neighbor um she's okay. a very um very um you know sweet lady and um she's into the tanks she loves the tanks but um so she'll uh sometimes uh help me out um in the past we've had a house sitter <clears throat> you know to house sit our uh our for for our dogs that's uh helped out with the uh, reef tank so yeah that is uh one thing that definitely makes me nervous is that mm -hmm. um there are not a lot of um, folks that I can really lean on in terms of reef keeping buddies nearby. So, is there anything that I should have asked you but I didn't? <laughs> I, I'm pulling them all out here. Anything you wanted to talk about this evening that we didn't touch on? You want to ask me a question? Um, you know, I, I talked about... I've already asked you a ton of questions, Matt, when we talked to... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but uh, and you know people can go find that interview. Uh, it's a search for uh, for me and Matt on uh, on YouTube. But um, I think um, you know one thing that I'll um, I'll say to kind of like wrap this whole uh, thing together is is that um, the hobby's changed a lot. I you know I think that um, it's it's gotten more complicated. There's a lot more moving parts. There's a lot more in, in terms of additives and supplements, and you've got the bacteria dosing, and you've got this, and you've got that. Whereas years and years ago, uh, it just seemed a lot uh, simpler. There was just um, you know less less things to worry about, and and you didn't have um, fancy controllers and flow meters and and all mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So 
I think my um, even even though, and I think I said this in the in the, in the equipment video. I think it's really. I think important to keep things as simple as possible and not to aut over automate. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. big advocate of not doing automatic water changes. I like to do manual water changes because I just think there's just too many things that can go wrong. So I, I'm a really kind of keep it simple kind of guy and uh, I don't like to overcomplicate things. I think that um, redundancy is also very important. I like to always have two return pumps in case one craps out. Um, I think it's also important to have a, um, you know, a um, um, backup light ballast or a backup light in case something goes wrong. So I think all mm -hmm. those things are important and redundancy is, is also another critical part. I can, I, I have backup pumps for every pump here. Yeah, you have to. And it's an investment of stuff. Sooner or later, you do end up using them. Yeah. Like when my... Uh, yeah, my central air system for the entire fish room went out, just plugged in the next one and worried about fixing the first one later. So, so I, I, am, I have one last question for right. you, and it's a funny uh -oh. one. Who knows how you will answer this one? Because it comes from my eight-year-old daughter. And your your eight-year-old daughter asked, submitted a question? My eight-year-old daughter submitted a question, and that question, good sir, is how dare you? I don't know how you're going to answer that. So you tell me what the answer is to that, that incredulous question. What's the question? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I have, she'll say that to me all oh. the time, and I always give her an answer, but I want to hear your answer. How dare you? I don't even, I don't, I don't even know how to answer that question there, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you I was going to throw you a hard one. I always tell her, I dare, that's how, and okay. leave it at that. Good answer. So. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's the question for my eight-year-old right. daughter, so I had to. Put All right. It well, in she there. stumped so, me. She did. I think you dare incredibly well, sir. That's <laughs> that's my answer. You do it with style and class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So I will put it up here one more time, Chris. Or uh, sorry, not Chris. Keith, <laughs> we've got you in the November December twenty twenty one issue of Coral Magazine. It's in the chat for your aquarium portrait. And uh, let's see here. Lots of good stuff in here, but you start on page 70. Yeah, right I'm showing it also in the uh, live stream, the picture. Perfect. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to get to turn the table on you for a change. I hope yeah, you enjoyed it. Yeah, this man, is, this is awesome, Matt. <laughs> I, really, uh, I really had a lot of fun with this. And, and um, yeah, it... Um, just it was it was great digging in yeah thank you again for uh for letting me uh turn the turn the script on you so uh should we remind folks one more time about the uh the giveaway absolutely yeah, yeah. um let me bring this up here in terms of the instagram contest so uh matt and everybody at coral magazine is is offering up some free one-year subscriptions to the magazine and and three of those are going to be the domestic print edition and three to the digital edition which will be open to anybody in the world who uh, has an internet uh, connection. And all you have to do is go to this post on the Reef Bum Instagram page, like the Reef Bum Instagram account, like the Coral Magazine um, Instagram account, and tag two reef keeping buddies in the comments of that post. And uh, we will randomly select six winners from those comments you have until next tuesday at uh, 12 noon eastern standard time december 7th to do that and uh yeah you should folks it's really easy to enter this contest and uh it's an awesome magazine and uh, i highly recommend you uh make the effort to do that yeah you can't hey you know six people are gonna win yeah so. Yeah. All right, Matt. So um, let's uh, let's wrap. Let me uh, let me just uh, thank the sponsors of the show again for um, for, for supporting me and and the uh, the show here. Bulk Resupply and Ecotech Marine. I also want to thank all you folks out there for watching and uh, commenting and asking questions. It was super super fun. And um, I just want to mention my next live stream. This is interesting, Matt. Is going to be Saturday. This Saturday, December fourth. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm having a live coral show. So all those awesome corals cool. you saw, 
you know, in the video and in the, uh, in the spread in Coral Magazine, I'm going to be doing a little, uh, you know, like one and a half uh, live Coral show on YouTube. So you can All visit right. uh, reefbum.com slash live show and get the, uh, get the details. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to be doing that on, uh, on this Saturday. And then the next wrapping with reef bum, I'm going to have next Thursday, December 9th, 7 PM Eastern standard time. Dr. Sanjay Yoshi is going to be on. So that should be another really awesome, interesting, uh, episode. And, and, uh, definitely I recommend tuning in to, uh, to see that Matt, um, anything else you want to say? I uh, just, it's been a pleasure to wrap with you again. And, uh, I look forward to more in the future. Cool. So. All right, everybody, listen, be safe out there, and we will uh, see you next time. Adios.